Welcome to BioRad's Blackboard Training. This is a series of short, informal tutorials brought to you by industry experts. This video is the third in our WestGuard Rules series. We'll be covering a number of basic concepts that are needed to understand the actual WestGuard Rules. In our previous video, we learned that these are the original six rules that WestGuard recommended for use in the clinical laboratory. Let's start off with WestGuard's 1-2-S rule. This rule is violated when a single control value is outside two standard deviations from the mean. In this case, it's on the positive side of the mean. However, remember that the violation can occur on either side of the mean. Westgard's next rule is 1-3-S. This rule is violated when a single control value is outside three standard deviations from the mean. Remember that violations can occur on either side of the mean. 2, 2s is the next rule we'll consider. This rule is violated when two QC results on the same side of the mean exceed two standard deviations. In our last example, we had two consecutive points that were out. However, we only used one level of control. We call this scenario an across run violation. This rule can also be violated within a run. This happens when both levels of control exceed the 2SD limit on the same side of the mean. R4S is the next rule we'll address. This rule is violated if there is at least 4 SD difference between control values within a single run. Next is 4-1S. This rule is violated when four QC results on the same side of the mean exceed one standard deviation. This rule can also be violated across a run. This happens when both levels of control exceed one SD on the same side of the mean. The final rule is 10X. The 10X rule is violated when there are a total of 10 control points on either side of the mean, regardless of the standard deviation. If only one level of control is involved, the rule is violated within a run. If more than one level of control is involved, the rule is violated across a run. Now that we've covered the basic six rules, let's look at a practical application. The WestGuard rules can help distinguish between random and systematic error. This can aid in troubleshooting. Random error is any deviation from the laboratory mean. Some random error is expected. This falls outside plus or minus 3SD of the mean. We encourage you to pause the video and review the list of possible causes of random error. On the other hand, systematic error is a trend or shift away from the laboratory mean. Small amounts of systematic error are tolerable. The error will remain until corrective action is taken. Again, we recommend that you pause the video to review the possible causes of systematic error. So practically, how does each rule help with error detection? 1-2-S merely warns that random or systematic error may be present in the test system. 1-3-S identifies unacceptable random error or possibly the beginning of a large systematic error. 2-2-S only identifies systematic error. R-4-S only identifies random error. There are two applications of the 4-1-S rule within control material violations indicate systematic bias in a single area of the method curve, while across control material violations indicate systematic error over a broader concentration. These two applications also pertain to the 10x rule. Within control material violations indicate systematic bias in a single area of the method curve, while across control material violations indicate systematic error over a broader concentration. We hope you found this brief tutorial helpful. For all of your QC needs, visit www.qcnet.com. 